Hello there, and as usual, I'm Eric from Ice Day and Gamers, and welcome. So this week I was fishing around the Steam Workshop. Oh, God damn it, Aaron, you had to do that, didn't you? I was fishing around it, and I found this guy. Now, it's not a super functional fish, so don't expect mad travels through space with it. But it looks and it's just so majestic. You could literally build a space engineer's fish tank and let these ships just float around in some manner. And it'd just be extremely relaxing if it was just some sort of screensaver. I, I don't know. But apart from that, let's have a look at how these things are actually built. So these are based on what I believe is a koi carp. And we've seen ships in the past like this. I believe there's a larger sharp that have an exoskeleton that can actually twist. So you can see each of these individual skeleton parts actually twist and move. You can see how they flex in now. But these are not twisting and moving on in any usual way. They're actually being pissed and powered. And I want to just, just take advantage of this little factor that he's adding in here. He's added these solar panels. So you can imagine that this ship could just endlessly float around and be powered around space. In in reality, the tailing and the wiggling motion, you'll have to back me up this here. If you think this could be different, then you'll let me know in the comments below. Wouldn't actually have any effect on it traveling through space since there's no water or air resistance. So there's no, that tail flapping side to side will actually add to its propulsion. It would be purely down to the thrusters. So you can see these little fins that are stuck on the rotors. Each one of these rotors is powered to that computer in the center. And just look how it curves back. You've got these little outer shell parts protecting them solar panels, but not limiting the power output. Just really like it. Just flows so naturally. If I just look up from above here, you can see how that tail actually moves back and forth. Let's um, have a look at the tail itself. So the tail itself is actually mounted on these little downward hinges in this section with a large solar panel area doubled up on this side. Very beautiful indeed. Let's see if we can get inside it and then we'll take it for a little bit of a test flight. So each one of these actual pivot points is connected with, I think it's four rotor points. So we'll actually move to the head area because it's a little bit easier since the tail's moving more than the front. So in this area itself, we have the rotor at the bottom, we have the rotor at the top, and then we have the individual joint. And this allows for a little bit of flex. But then the really awesome part about this is these little pistons are moving back and forth on these outer blocks that are allowing it to sway side, and so side to side on its joints. It's a very advanced system for such a simple effect, but in this case it allows it to flex and move without completely destroying itself unless you go crazy with the gyroscopes. This little thing also has a rather exciting little battery storage center up at the head. Everything in the head you kind of expect it, it's like storage and cargo where the rest of the corridor is just kind of hollow, but if you were going to use this in a functional sense that I wouldn't recommend because the amount of rotors just kind of attract problems in space engineers. You could fill this up with cargo, containers, or just do it for a little fish tank design like I was talking about before. But you can see these rear fins, instead of being mounted sideways and upwards, like these ones that are flexing side to side, these are the ones that are actually mounted to the hull directly, so they just flex ever so slightly. So if we look at the tail at the back, you can just see how that all moves. It just creates such a beautiful effect. So let's actually take this thing for a little bit of a test drive. Now, I'm not expecting miracles with this. So first of all, you can actually see the computers and the tails and all the systems are running. And if we power this forward, we're going to get the basic generic rotor problem that you get with all ships that are connected up with many rotors that I don't think they fixed in Space Engineers. You basically start to tilt upwards um, the more that you move forward. But you can't really tell it since it's positioning in space. So as we move faster and faster, the other issue is the rotors will lock in place after a certain speed to avoid any damage but still, it's still curling through space. I can also use my gyroscopes, and at the moment in time, you can see if I turn my head left to right, nothing will happen, and that's because the gyroscopes are, or the rotors are on, but if I turn them rotors off, I can actually allow it to flex a little bit more naturally, but at the same time, it, there's a lot of factors that just kind of pull and move the ship around unnaturally. Basically, the tail and the rear area will just continue to rock. It won't flow with the head, so if I try to whip the head towards the right here, the tail won't really flow with it, it'll just be very stiff and rigid, so you're not going to get that natural movement effect, you're just going to get that standard sort of wiggle. So if we activate number four and turn our rotors back on, that should reset the systems ever so slightly, so we get a very nice little movement. But just a really beautiful piece of design, and oh my god, where's it gone? I think we've flown off in some random direction, we'll have to pop up out of the cockpit here to give it one last overview. But a beautiful little design, something I just wanted to share with you because it's not every day Aaron goes for a design like this. But this one just kind of really shows what you can do 
with making these objects a lot more natural kind of add to that effect even though it has a hell of a lot of rotors that would attract serious clang and destruction anyway there'll be a link down in the description to have a look at the ship yourself and let me know what you'd like to look at next week